Good morning. Uh, welcome to District Dialogue. I am Ann jones Guider, District 4 Commissioner, and I'm welcoming you today. And I'm going to be talking, uh, visiting with uh, a local ministry and organization here, right here on Church Street and uh, the corner of Church Street and Fairburn Road. They have uh, been in existence for about 20 years. However, they have moved. So we're here to uh, show everybody the new location, to introduce them to the staff, to uh, also go over the history of this uh, ministry, this great, great ministry that reaches out to the community and helps the community and even beyond the, the boundaries of Douglas County. So welcome and let's go inside and meet some people. All right, now we're inside Loving Hands and we're gonna introduce you to the ladies here that just do all the work. <laughs> they do a lot of work and they run this operation uh, and Chris Bentley here is the director of Loving Hands and she's gonna inter introduce you to her team. Okay, good morning, good morning. Um, this is Leanne Champion, she's the assistant director. She's been here three years. Um, I've been here about two and a half, I think, something like that. Um, that Kimberly in the middle, she's been here for eight years, right at eight years. Oh Donna. Uh, it, Donna's been here, wave Donna, all right, there she is, that's Donna. She's been here for two years, two years. thank you, thank you. And then Laura is our newest staff member and she's been here for uh, about six months. So, um, you know, the small little core people um, keep this place running and operating on a daily basis. Well, it's a big place, and so I can see you have done a lot of work since the dedication night. Uh, but we're going to let Leanne kind of walk us around and, and, and show us uh, just what they actually take in and, and, and distribute to uh, people that are in need or they sell uh, to, to raise funds to help people in need. So let's uh, go on and walk around the store, and we'll be back with you later on, Chris. Okay. okay. Thank right, you. Thank you. All right, Leanne, where do you want to start? Let's start with clothes since we're in the center of the store. Um, we take uh, gently used men's, women's, and children's clothes. Um, we offer everything at a low, a low cost so people come in for assistance. Um, they can get you know, quite a lot of um, items for, um, for what they're given. So we take gently used men's clothes, women's clothes, and then we have our children's in the back. Um, and again, we said gently used anything with no holes, spots. Um, our damage so and um, preferably wash when they bring them <laughs> and preferably wash that's <laughs> right that's all right. right thank you okay um and then we'll go over here to our housewares area um so we take gently used smaller pieces of furniture as well uh, we have decorative household items we have kitchen items um and then going back here we have linens and then we have um, different household variety items what are the most needed uh, items that when people come in here, say they've had a fire or something like that? What are, what um, a lot of times we need things like, of course, clothing, because a lot of times people leave a house fire with just what they have on their back. Yes. Um, they need like small appliances, um, personal items. Um, we also we also take toiletries and things like that. We don't sell, but we give them as people have need for those okay. to the homeless, people who've had a tragedy, um, anything like that. So um, clothing, small furniture <coughs> items, and appliances, linens, linens especially, linens, yes. yeah, um, sheets, towels, <coughs> anything that you feel like is a necessity to run your home, okay. those things always are usable. Anything, a lot of times we have decorative items and we do operate as a thrift store. So we do sell some items, anyone can come in and shop. So anything that, um, um, you know, is decorative also we also use those. Now you do not take in large appliances <clears throat> or mattresses. No. You, I don't think by law you can take in the mattresses. No, we don't take mattresses, box springs, um, TVs, large appliances, 
um, computers. our computers. Yeah. yeah, those are our five items. Yeah, those are hard to dispose of if, if they don't operate correctly. I right, know. right. So uh, let's move on to okay. the other parts. Okay. All right. Um, we just have more of our decorative items back here. And then we have um, baby and children's items. So we also take just, you know, anything that people can buy. A lot of times people like to just thrift shop, you know, so it's um, both decorative and functional items that we have. So. And dishes, do they sell good? They sell very well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, especially when we get the sets. When mm -hmm. I go in a thrift shop or something like that, I always look at the dishes because mm -hmm. uh, I like the older. Yeah, uh, dishes uh, and glassware, and we sell a lot of coffee you, pots too. Set down there. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got one of these, and those are very expensive. Those are. Is that uh, a Pampered Chef? Yes. Yeah. They're very expensive, and you can cook in the, in the oven, oven with it. Mm -hmm. Yes. I use it all the time. Yeah. Very good. Very good. All right. Let's move on. And shoes, you actually. Yes, we have men's. Those are kind of messy, but we have men's um, shoes, and then we have ladies' shoes up front. Uh huh. We have kids' shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if women, you know, we've got spring season coming up and <clears throat> spring cleaning, <laughs> and I could clean out my closet and probably fill up one of the <laughs> shelves we back all here probably could. <laughs> with uh, uh, shoes that I no longer wear and even clothes that I no longer wear. So we need to be thinking about uh, where we could uh, give it back so it will help our community. And uh, these people know who need help and they, they they actually work with them one-on-one. -on -one. We do, we yeah. work with them, we assess their needs. Um, we have uh, women and children who are at the battered women's shelter, mm -hmm. men who have come from prison or men who are just homeless um, who go to the men's, the men's shelter. Um, we assist families in crisis because of a house fire. Um, a lot of times, you know, grandparents will take in grandchildren uh, unexpectedly. That's more and they often have nothing. than not now. Yes, yeah, becoming very common yeah. now. So we help people in a lot of um, crisis situations. Okay, well, let's move on. You got lots of toys here, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have lots of toys. For um, the smaller kids. Uh -huh. yeah. We have toys and games, and then of course, you know, we have our children's clothes, boy, both boys and girls. Now, um, you have a small case of food, canned food and stuff. Did, I, I didn't know that you did the food. Yeah, so. as, as they come in, a lot of times people just drop off food that they want to help people in the community who need it. So we, we set a limit so that every, you know, one poor person doesn't come in and take advantage of all of it. But we have canned foods just on an as donated basis. But we also have bread and sweets that we share. A lot of people come in and they've never shopped, they've never bought a thing, but they come in and they get bread and sweets. There's a and, lot of homeless um, people in Douglas County. I don't, Probably the public do not realize how many we do have out here. I think it's uh, several hundred, two or three hundred. But um, and they minister to the uh, homeless too. So yes, we do. We have a lot of people who live in the woods, and <coughs> some come here and some don't. Sometimes we take it out to them. Yes, on an as And the basis. county is working on the homeless uh, situation. We're mm -hmm. trying to come up with uh, some kind of a shelter and mm -hmm. everything. So yeah, uh, and we're doing some work out at the old animal shelter putting mm -hmm. in some uh, trailers and, so we can set people up. Yeah, we're hoping Just to give them a hand up, not just a yes. hand out. And that's what so. most of them want is a hand, uh, just a helping hand to help them get out of their situation. <clears throat> okay. All right, let's go on. Okay. So they just come to get the bread here. Sometimes they come to get the bread. <laughs> um, you know, we usually have more than this. Some days we have sweets. Some days we have two racks full of This of is very bread. tempting. I don't know about y'all, but there's sweet rolls over here. <laughs> and donuts. <laughs> and donuts, yes. Uh -huh. um, but these are always offered free. We have a lady who goes, um, she, for 30 years she's gone and picked up um, bread and sweets and just given to the community. It's, it's basically just when the, the grocery store is overbaked. <laughs> that they give it away to um, the charitable organizations. This is a pretty dish right here mm -hmm. because usually it just has 12. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, 12. Yeah, uh, we always have a, um, a seasonal display here. Yeah, very cute. Very so, cute. and then um, right now we have a ton of sunscreen. We also have books up in the front um, and we separate those according to, like a lot of times the high school students will need their reading books for um, summer reading and different things and then we have all the popular authors. So we have a good variety. Now I noticed when uh, we came in the door a while ago there's a, a box of uh, old jewelry. Okay. We and do man, have jewelry. I can fill that bucket up because oh, yeah. it, you know 
we go through stages, different kinds of jewelry that we like, and <clears throat> the older I've gotten, the more simple I've got. Uh -huh. <laughs> so. Yeah, we have costume jewelry as well as um, as well as gold and yeah. silver, whatever people were you know done with and and give to us. <laughs> so clean out your uh, jewelry cases, ladies, and bring them up here, and uh, they can resell them or, or, and help the the people here in the community. Now, Leanne, you also, this is a ministry. Yes, it is. So when people come in here, whether they're homeless or just down and out or whatever, mm -hmm. you do minister th to them. We uh, do. We try to get to know. We have a lot of um, regular shoppers as well as clients who come in. And anyone who comes in, we ask that they fill out a prayer request, something who's going on in their, something's going on in their life, whether it's health or financial or anything that they feel need for prayer. And we have, um, we have special prayer for these prayer requests once a week, but we pray on a daily basis with people and for people who come in. A lot of times someone's had an, a family member with an ongoing illness or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we try to, every time they come in, we, you know, we ask about them and we try to pray with them and for them. Well, that, and that's that an active great. part of our ministry. Uh, is it well received? It is, of course. You know, we don't force anyone to. I know, I know. We don't force anyone to, but we always, you know, we try to befriend our customers. Yeah. So they feel welcome. They also feel like people care about them. Yeah. And we pray over each client when they come in. Um, they're they're assessed in the office, and that's part of our assessment. You know, we see what their needs are, and um, we pray over them before they leave. That's great. Uh, you know, I direct a celebrate recovery at my church it's on, a wonderful on Friday program. nights, and uh, oftentimes they come in there and they're closed mind as far mm -hmm. as uh, faith and the Bible and Jesus and stuff like that. Yeah. But the, uh, after they've been there a while, they, they, they see the love mm -hmm. that the leaders surround them with mm -hmm. and the non-judgment that yeah. they uh, give them. And uh, they open up sometimes they, uh -huh. for the first time. They may not have been taught anything right. about the Bible when they were growing up. So uh, you may be the first one to ever say anything right. about actually praying for somebody. And you know, mm -hmm. people think, what do you want from me? But you're saying, we just want to what show can them God's I give love. you? What can I give mm -hmm. you? So yes, that's very awesome. And that's why it's successful. <laughs> <laughs> we so, do try to um, show love to everybody and prayer is one of those ways you can show a connection to God yeah. and show them His love. Well, Leanne, I appreciate you showing us the store. Now we're gonna, um, go over and meet some people that help to make this facility what it looks like today. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, now we're going to uh, introduce you and you probably recognize most of these people because they've been around for a long time. Um, we're gonna introduce you to uh, uh, the people that help make this new facility what it is today. And I'm going to start over here with uh, Jimmy Heidel, welcome, and Jerry O'Neill, and Gary McManus. Now, Gary, I'm going to start with you because uh, I'm going to start with you. I want you to explain to the people the vision for this ministry. As early as the 1990s, we had a group of men and uh, from different churches who had a burden to help people that uh, were on hard times. So we traveled around and looked at different ministries and talked to different people that were already in that this type of ministry. Got some insights from them and uh, we waited and waited and waited for a place to uh, start a ministry like that. And one day, we, uh, the Lord just spoke and said, here it is. And we're talking about the old VFW hall located on Spring Street. And we approached the church, uh, the First Baptist Church, about using it. And they said, gave us permission to do so mm -hmm. at our own expense. Well, we didn't have any money. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a long haul. So yeah. Over a couple of years, we were able to rehab that building, which was in very bad shape initially. And so in 1997, in July, we opened the, uh, the uh, second floor 
yeah, this type ministry. And we've been there for 20, over 20 years. 20 years. And uh, we're abundantly blessed to see so many people uh, being helped. Mm -hmm. All right. And Jerry, uh, you were one of those uh, gentlemen that had that heart for the community? Well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> that building that Gary's talking about was the old armory building. Mm -hmm. And the Baptist Church was fixing to tear it down, actually. And like you said, it just, like a light bulb, we looked at it and thought we might be able to use it. Well, we took it on and did about a $140,000 renovation on it. <clears throat> but we started out with $5,000. I was... Uh, president of the small business for the chamber and uh, we disbanded so we had five thousand dollars in our bank account mm -hmm. so I called every member on the, on that committee and asked them if it would be all right if we used that money to get started so that's that's what we had to get started that's awesome. but it just seemed like everything, time we needed, needed some, something God would provide. And we got so much faith out of this uh, thing. I don't know about these guys, but my faith just mm -hmm. grew because I, I could see the work of God working. Now, you're not just involved in this ministry. You uh, you also uh, started the uh, shelter, the women's shelter uh, yeah. here in Douglasville, and uh, that's been turned over to Dr. Ford now. Right. But y you just have that heart to, to help uh, the, the community and the people, the people in the community, and to min just minister to them, too. And Jimmy, um, you might want to add to what has been said here, but I know that you've been uh, involved in so many uh, things around Douglasville. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been here since April of 41. I remember so. when you were very young. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I remember that too. In fact, I, w I was reflecting this morning. Uh, Gary said uh, we uh, renovated that building in 1997. And I was reflecting back on the people who uh, helped us at that, and some of them are not lo any longer with us, but uh, it sure is a lot different uh, when you're in your 50s and 60s than it is when you're in your 70s Amen. and 80s to Amen. do that. <laughs> but uh, these three, uh, us three were there, and uh, we have another guy that helped us out this time uh, that uh, he just has a heart for those things. What, what's his name? Uh, Don Gray. Oh, Don uh, Gray. Don, okay. I don't know how many hours he put in on this building, too. Don's 87 years old now. and But uh, he, he loves doing it. He's, uh, he's just got a heart for it. Didn't you uh, say something about some women helping? Oh, uh, <laughs> we have had uh, numerous. Oh, uh, you're talking about uh, when you work in this, kind of business you get to see miracles that happen you get to have if you don't believe there are angels in the world there are oh yeah um i was leaving here i, I go to a bible study on wednesday uh at afternoon joe fowler's bible study and i stopped by to pick up a guy that is uh he's not able to drive anymore and a lady that I had known for 30 years, probably at our bank, Lynn Kilgore, she happened to be there. Mm -hmm. Well, I was all grubby and sweaty and everything. That was in uh, probably September, I guess. And she said, what have you been doing? And I said, well, <laughs> I've explained what she done. She said, that's funny. Pat Owen and I have just started a company. We, we paint things. And oh I'd like goodness. to get in, involved with yeah. this. And lo and behold, uh, she did, and Pat did, and um, I jokingly say we were slapping paint on things. <laughs> like that. Now they put the woman's touch on it. Right. This place looks like it does, it does because of what they did. Yes. And we, Lynn and I, were chatting together one day, and she said uh, she happened to be in a uh, financial advisor's office, 
And she said, I don't know why I stopped in that office. I did not have a, I did not have an appointment with him. It's a he, divine she said, appointment. And, but uh, it, the Lord puts folks together, and yeah. uh, those were two ladies that really, really helped us. Uh, we've had so many people that have had so many hours that are in there, but um, uh, the old building that we had, that building was built in 1947, yeah. and the upper level of that was a skating rink. When I was a kid, we used to skate up yeah. there. It became the boogie barn after that, <laughs> and uh, but we took the mural down and... Uh, but you had more visibility here. Oh, oh we, and not only that, we had six, I think, six parking spots over at the other place, yes. and we have over 30 here. That's so. awesome. Oh, let me but tell you. But you've got, a main, you're on one of the main streets right here in Douglasville, and then, of course, Fairburn Road, so uh, anybody yeah. can find you now. Not only that, we uh, shared uh, uh, space with the Good Samaritan Center, which is now on Grady Street, uh -huh. and, uh, oh, what, what's the school, here? The yeah. school, and the, the, yeah, the city. The school, the and uh, it, you know, we have had so many people that have done so many things that have benefited us. Yeah. Like, we have never had a real big bank account, but we've never had anybody to turn us down yeah. <laughs> because we didn't have a big bank account. Somehow or other, through uh, the Lord's benevolence, I guess you'd have to say, things get done. Yes. Um, it's this building here um, we started in late July of this year well we said now Labor Day will will be <laughs> open and then Labor Day came and went and they said well you know uh, presidents I mean uh, Columbus Day which is in October will be open by then and Halloween will be <laughs> open wouldn't it be nice to be open in uh, around Thanksgiving <laughs> And uh, then I said, well, now Christmas is coming up. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, I know. You know, I... But let me, but the thing is, he, Gary never got exasperated about this. He's got the patience, patience of, Job. of Job. And, uh, but, and you've got to have a person who has a vision as to what you want to accomplish yes. here. Now, this was done mainly with volunteer labor. And, you know, when you're working volunteers, uh, they have lives too. Uh, you have ha hair appointments and you have doctor's <laughs> appointments and I don't have the hair appointment part. But, but uh, you have, and, and some days you just don't feel like doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you can come up with innovative excuses, but some days you mm -hmm. just don't feel like coming up here and hanging sheetrock or doing stuff. Yeah. But um, it, the people that you meet and the things that you get to observe Amen. by doing these yeah. things, you wouldn't trade them for anything. Amen. And uh, it's, this is uh, seeing this now versus what it was when we started. Yeah. Um, I think the former tenants would probably like, this was, it was a car dealership to start with. Yeah. And then it became a Christian bookstore. Yeah. Lafice Edwards and yeah. Jerry did uh -huh. that. And, then uh, it has been, uh, of course, the hair, Atlanta hair, yeah. and Linda uh, worth worked mm -hmm. that. And uh, I think that all of them, if they came back and looked at what it looks like now versus especially what it's used for, right? Uh, they would be very happy, I think. Yeah. Gary, I'm going to jump back to you. Um, now, everybody knows you because of your position with the sheriff's office. You do, you're the chaplain at the jail for the past 30 years. 34. <laughs> 34 years and uh, he goes in there and he's just as patient like you say patience 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 but commitment is what uh, when I think of Gary McManus I think of commitment Absolutely. whatever he is working on he is totally committed and he's is first commitment is to the Lord and everybody that meets him sees that and uh, didn't you get a uh, man of the year not too many years back. <laughs> Seems like something like that happened. I'd... But I, I love this man. I, you will never meet a more humble. He, he's probably going to give me down the country for even getting him on camera today. You but count he, on it. <laughs> but he's very humble, but he's, uh, he's uh, 
just uh, so committed to the community, to people, and to the Lord. So uh, we thank you for your service there. But would you tell the people how they can help with this ministry? Well, there's an opportunity to donate <clears throat> all kinds of things, uh, household goods, clothes, shoes, so on. Mm -hmm. Even automobiles or vehicles. We have that. processed vehicles in the past, and we, when one shows up that's worthy of being passed on, we have them checked out by mechanics and, mm -hmm. and then pass those on too. And that, that's so gratifying that we have a place where people can donate regardless. Uh, we do have limitations, by the way. And we went over that with yeah. the, about the appliances and everything. But to see people uh, mm -hmm. helped, that, that need help for whatever reason it might be, is such a joy. And, uh, we but give, people can volunteer to come down here to help you uh, fold towels and sheets oh, yes, and things yes. like that. My Sunday school class right. does that. Mm -hmm. And uh, But they can also... Um, they can volunteer their time, they can volunteer items, but they can also donate. That's, a, that's yes. correct. I, I understand you have a sump, sump pump <laughs> back here that really needs replacing because of the water coming off this hill back here. So uh, let's hope that there's people out there be uh, willing to uh, give to that cause. Yeah. So. And I might mention also, and in addition to being able to donate goods and time, uh, we never turn a financial donation down. Right. <laughs> so I'm not asking per se, but uh, we could use some money because we have some things we need to do uh, that we just don't have the money yeah. to do it with. So this uh, ministry helps a lot of people, uh, whether they're just down and out. They give them a hand up and not just a hand out, but they they pray for them. They uh, assess their needs and they do it on an individual basis so uh, it's a it's a wonderful ministry and I thank y'all for what y'all have done to uh, accomplish this goal it's, uh, it's, it looks a lot better than it did the other <laughs> night when I was here <laughs> at the ded dedication so somebody's been some house doing some house cleaning but we're going to um, Go and we're going to talk with Chris, and she's going to share some testimonies, just one-on-one -on -one testimonies about things that she has witnessed here and uh, the changed lives. So, um, thank you, gentlemen. I love y'all. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. We yes. appreciate Thanks it. Thank you. All right, we started the show with Chris, and we're going to end the show with Chris. Uh, Chris is the director here, and uh, she's going to just share a few, uh, a couple of testimonies uh, about the program. Okay, well, I have so many um, that I could tell. Uh, I have some that are my favorite. Uh, one is I was sitting in my office one morning, and this man walks in, and threw a picture ID down on my desk. And he said, do you know this person? And I'm like, no, um, I, I, don't, I don't think I know this person. And he goes, look again. He goes, he goes look again. Um, I think you know this person. You've seen this person before. And I'm like, no, I'm pretty sure I haven't. And he goes, that's me. And it was his um, prison release ID. Oh my goodness. And he goes, I'm not going back to that person. And <laughs> he just had this natural glow about him. And he had come back because we have, um, um, in our ministry, we help those that are coming out of the prison system. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times they come out with nothing and we provide them with clothing and, and things to kind of help mm -hmm. them get back on their feet. So he was coming back to say thank you and um, awesome. talking about yeah. his life. Um, let's see, another one um, is uh, grandparents. Had, um, a grandfather had come in. He had gotten emergency custody of six grandchildren 
Oh my goodness. Three were from his daughter, three were from his son. Um, there were only two that were in elementary school. His wife was in the car with the baby, and then he had the other three that were just clustered, you know, holding on to his legs, mm -hmm. looking up to him like he was, you know, a god, which I'm sure in, his, in their eyes, mm -hmm. you know, he was. So he, he was there trying to get some clothing for him because apparently, the three children involved with his daughter, it was a crime scene. So they couldn't even get Go into back. the, they couldn't even get in to get any clothing. So mm -hmm. we helped him with clothing. Um, there was another one um, where, this is, this is one that I love. This is a little girl walked in <coughs> one day and handed this to me. And um, she had been collecting pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and there's even a dollar bill in here. Mm -hmm. And you could see she's got a total down here at the bottom. And um, she said, hope our change will make a change. Oh my and goodness. Um, I just love this. I know I should take the money and put it in the till, but <laughs> I set it on my desk because we just, you just, that's what I say about this place, you never, know what kind of effect that you have right. on people um, that you that we come in contact with mm -hmm. on a daily basis. And uh, there's one more story. There was a young lady that walked into um, our building. It was a Saturday and she was up here from Columbus. She was in the military in Columbus and she walked in and she goes, this place it's still here, I can't believe it. And she was, um, her father passed away. Her mother was trying to raise three girls and she um, told the story. Uh, we have a bread, we call it our bread ministry where yeah. there's a lady that um, comes and delivers. She goes, she's been doing it for 30 years. She goes around and picks up all the bread that's gonna mm -hmm. be discarded at mm -hmm. Publix and Kroger and then brings it here and then we have some people that come in and they just come in to get bread. Mm -hmm. And she can remember coming in as a child and getting, she said, I could pick out, mom always told me, pick out whatever kind of bread I wanted. And then she said her mama would, her, would buy clothes here for her. Mm -hmm. And she goes, you know, I don't know how we would have made it mm -hmm. without this ministry and without this this place so it just you just never know you know so the the proceeds from the thrift store uh -huh. go to help um, what right we <laughs> well we you know we are a ministry we operate like a thrift store in that we receive donations mm -hmm. from people and then we um, of course we have some that we just give that qualify for assistance, like some of those that I talked about. Mm -hmm. um, but others, we process them and we sell them because we have to, you know, we have to pay utilities. Mm -hmm. We have to, um, you know, we have to keep this, we have some the operating upkeep, costs. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. in the building, we, you know, so um, we, the proceeds from those sales go to just keep the ministry going. And, ministry. To, and to help uh, people outside in oh, the community yeah. that um, need help yes. and everything. Yeah. Um, well, y'all do a, a wonderful thing here. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to be successful. You already have been for 20 years. Yes, yes. We're, uh, <laughs> so uh, you have a, a little bit more visibility here. So yes, I, I we do. Mm -hmm. Business will probably pick up. So. I know. <laughs> I know. We hope so. You know, and and uh, you know, we just love to have people come in and look around. We have some people that. Our regulars, you know, yeah. that come and so. Uh, here in Douglas County, we have several uh, ministries like this. Uh, we have uh, the Gift of Love over in Lithia Springs, and then we have uh, the Pantry uh, here in Douglasville on Highway 5 behind um, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm -hmm. They offer free food for people that need uh, food on Saturday mornings and things. But you can go to celebrate Douglas County and go to um, programs 
and go down to CORE, C-O-R-E, and that's just uh, community organizations. Uh, it's got a, a world of information out there about who can help you with what uh, if you, you need help, even your electric bill and things like that. So uh, visit, uh, you can go to a public library and access the computers there. But, um, or you can go, come up to the courthouse and tell somebody, somebody at the Welcome Center that you want to talk to somebody about um, some help. So there's uh, many opportunities out there. Um, this is a very loving community. I, I believe um, I, I've been involved in mm -hmm. several myself, but there's there's just so many of them, and many of the churches they have uh, thrift stores. I think uh, Crossroads has a thrift store, mm -hmm. but. Um, <clears throat> Help your fellow man. That's all we're asking you to do. If you can't get out and volunteer, or, or you don't have anything you can donate, uh, maybe you can help them financially. But just, uh, you're never too old. We've shown that this morning. <laughs> you're never too old to help your community and to volunteer in some manner, and just um, be the loving hands for this community, okay? Thank you, and I hope you've enjoyed the show.